yes, we still have the box. I like doing this, so sue me. We are delving in again to the donations so kindly provided by Sasami-chan, which still has a lot more golden books in it. So how about hmm, Tom and Jerry's Merry Christmas? Hmm, that works for me. Yeah, a um, little out of season. That's kind of what I was thinking, but I, th I thought I'd let you say it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Assuming I approve the video, you see that we're celebrating Christmas a tad out of season. I knew, air quotes, knew there were some holiday themed books in here, and I hadn't quite decided when I was going to do when we hit them. Set them aside or read them. Eh, the internet is forever, so we may as well read them. So today's book is MGM's Tom and Jerry's Merry Christmas. And it has a nice cover with um, Jerry in a tree with that little mouse that I can't remember the name of. I think it may have been Pip Squeak or something. <laughs> and Tom, all happy around the tree, looks like he's about to grab it or something. And I just noticed there's actually some stab marks in the cover in Tom's hand. Yeah, this is a... Um tough book. It's survived a lot, apparently. It's been around a while. It's back from the 39 cent golden book days. I'll get to a publishing date when we get to the correct page. MGM's Tom and Jerry's Merry Christmas, told by Peter Archer. Pictures by MGM Cartoons, adapted by Harvey Eisenberg and Samuel Armstrong. Hmm. Adapted from what, as usual? From cartoons. <laughs> Copyright 1954. And this was the ninth printing in 1973. Ah, and some lovely pictures. Mm -hmm. Jerry in an ornament, or yeah, in an ornament. Mm -hmm. And once again, the little mouse. I think he was given more than one name over the years, because this one on the first page is not ringing a bell to me. Hmm. Jerry Mouse hung up his Christmas stocking, and a stocking for his little friend, Tuffy. Hmm. Yes, like the dish scrubber. Then he went to the door of the mouse hole and peeped out. Tom Cat was crouched in the big people's kitchen, not two squares away from the mouse hole, and he was watching it closely. We'll never get so much as a crumb to put in our stockings unless he goes away, said Jerry. Hmm. Interesting, there's some writing in this book. Big people, kitchen, Tom, and Cat are circled. I said this book is been through a lot, and not two squares away, in case you're wondering, is referring to the linoleum squares. Ah, yes, you can, which you can clearly see in the illustration. Yes, which you will never see in our videos, because fair use, everyone stop asking. And that Tom certainly didn't mean to do. He meant to guard all the goodies in the kitchen and on the tree, so that Cook would give him a fine big helping of Christmas dinner. Hmm, Tom's guarding to get food, and Jerry's planning to get food. Yes. Everyone's just hungry. Mm hmm Cheer up, said Jerry. There's a way to get rid of him. And he ran into the living room and started to saw a new mouse hole. Okay, that's a small saw. At least based on scale. Quite. What's that noise? cried Tom, tiptoeing out of the kitchen and along the wall to the place where Jerry was working. Y you know, I just remember something. These two never talked in the cartoons. Sometimes... Tom would yell and stuff because of a thing falling on his foot, but... Tom has sung on several occasions. Hmm. And, um, the devil's version of a mouse has talked to Jerry. And Tuffy has, uh, spoken, mostly in French. <laughs> now you saw, Jerry whispered to Tuffy, the minute Tuffy began... Jerry Mouse scurried out the back door with a pillowcase over his shoulder. He was soon filling it with candy and nuts and stuffed dates. But as he backed past the heaping bowls, he bumped into one filled with cranberry sauce, which was too near the edge. Crash, splash, down to the floor it went. Whoops. Also, what's that doing sitting out overnight? Mm, well, I don't know how they stored cranberry sauce back then or what kind of cranberry sauce it was. Also, nice illustrations. To me, it might be our lighting, but it's like a little dark. The color choices are a bit dark. It's a night scene. No. Yeah. What was that? Tom cried. He came racing into the kitchen just in time to see Jerry, bag and all, 
disappear into the mouse hole. Then Tom saw the cranberry sauce. If Cook sees that, he moaned, there'll be no Christmas dinner for me. And little as he liked it, lick, lick, lick. He began to lick up every last bit. Ever hear of a towel? Yeah. Oh, also, um, he's probably going to get caught and blamed for knocking over the bowl. Quite. At some point, Jerry has to feel guilty. It's Christmas. While Tom was busy at that, Jerry and Tuffy finished their new door and peeped out at the big people's Christmas tree. It was so beautiful that they both gasped. It is quite nice. Oh, sighed Tuffy. I'd like to have that little horn that's way up near the top. And Jerry squeaked, I'd like to have that little drum. Then both those mice must have had the same idea at the same time. Hmm. Run up the tree and get the instruments, the drum and the trumpet. Also, is it just me or does the reflection in that look like a grrr, a mouth with teeth? A little bit. Because they both smiled secret smiles. And when Jerry seemed to be sound asleep, Tuffy went tiptoeing out the back door. He soon came back with the little drum, hid it under his bed, and hopped in himself. He squeezed his eyes shut and snored away as if he'd been there all the time. Asleep at last, said Jerry, stealing out the front door and up the big people's tree. <laughs> ah, getting presents for both of them. Getting presents for each other. Yes. Each of them is grabbing what That's the other wanted. What I meant. Tuffy will have a Merry Christmas anyway, he thought, as he unhooked the little horn. But just as Jerry got to the bottom of the tree, whom did he see creeping between him and the mouse hole but his enemy, Tomcat? Poor Jerry. He flattened himself against the trunk, sure that he was done for this time. And there's Tom with his hand outstretched over the door. Yeah, looks more like he's waving. Mm-hmm. It's like he's, all, he's either waving or he's like, I'm going to grab the mouse. Mm -hmm. And there's Jerry over there on top of the presents with the horn in his hand. No, he's on top of the ring holding around the tree because remember he's pressed up against the trunk. Ah, uh -huh. oh, I see it now. It just it looked like a red box from my angle. Not quite. And then he saw that Tomcat wasn't even trying to catch him. Instead... That old cat was carrying a beautiful mouse-sized tree, all trimmed with bits of popcorn and tasty cheese and tiny candy beads. How, how nice of him. Uh, it, it's Christmas. Christmas truce. Mm -hmm. R remember the Christmas ballad of Snoopy and the Red Baron? Nah. Christmas truce. While Jerry watched, he pushed it through their new door and backed away, looking just about as sheepish as a cat ever looked and murmuring, Oh, well, Christmas comes but once a year. What do you know about that? gasped Jerry. <laughs> oh, cute and everything, and there's Tom holding the tree that wasn't in the previous shot. <laughs> and it's all decorated with the stuff they were talking about. And there's Jerry by the base again, looking out, going, What do you know? He put Tuffy's present under that beautiful little tree, and hurried into the bedroom. Wake up, Tuffy, he said. Come with me. Then Jerry led Tuffy to their storeroom, because it took them both to get out the big, brand new can of sardines that he had hidden there. Tied with red ribbon and propped against Tom's bowl, it made a most wonderful present. Quite. But why give him a present? asked Tuffy. Instead of answering, Jerry took him in to see their Christmas tree. It's from Tomcat. Tomcat gave it to us, he said, and the horn is from me. Soon the two little mice were merrily playing carols. Because we all know Christmas ornaments actually work. <laughs> yeah, it depends on the ornament. Some do, some don't. Most don't, actually. Mm -hmm. It wasn't long until Tom found his present, too. For me, he cried. They got a present for me? With happy tears in his eyes, he began to purr the same tune that Jerry and Tuffy were playing. Of course. And he looks happy. He's like looking off towards the other page where the mice are. Well, he knows he didn't get that from the big people. <laughs> and down they sat, one on each side of Tomcat, while all three, grinning from ear to ear, 
played and sang in close harmony. A very Merry Christmas to all. How cute. Quite. Christmas trees. Mm hmm So I guess this shot is actually Tom putting the tree down. Could be, but the tree is a little large for the one he gave them, but a little small for the one that the big people have. Mm -hmm. But it's a nice representation of the overall scene. Because mm -hmm. everybody looks happy, there's a tree, it's Christmas, snowflakes, you know, the whole shebang. Mm -hmm. And you will all see this lovely cover. As cleaned up as looks can get it. Because it's not as lovely from our end. As I said, well-loved book. Mm -hmm. Doesn't harm its readability. Nope. Once again, MGM's Tom and Jerry's Merry Christmas. Told by Peter Archer. Pictures by MGM Cartoons. Adapted by Harvey Eisenberg and Samuel Armstrong. Quite nice. Quite so, thanks again for listening. We have lots of other Ember's Reading Room recordings, even in playlists. This one will now be in, I think, three playlists. Ember's Reading Room, Tom and Jerry, and Christmas. Hmm. If it's not, it will once this up goes up. <laughs> yep, and if Golden Book still has the license, this may still be in print. We'll try to get you an Amazon link. As usual, Ebates link. Little heads up, Rakuten bought Ebates a while ago, and for a long time it's been Ebates, a Rakuten company. Now it's officially Rakuten, but it all still works the same. And so far my link still seems to work. So it's still there, but have to change the disclaimer. Amazon and Rakuten are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Thanks again for listening.